You can find just about anything on the web. You've heard it a million times, but for parents, that truism takes on a whole new meaning. I'm Alex Serena with Tuts Plus, and in this tutorial, I'll show you how to protect your family from the wild west of the web by using tools built right in to your Mac. While there are just about a million ways to do this, the parental controls built into OS X should go above and beyond the needs of most. To get started, navigate to System Preferences. Now select Parental Controls. Here you'll see a basic overview of what Parental Controls is capable of controlling. In order to begin making changes, you'll have to authenticate yourself to prove that you are, indeed, an administrator. So I'll do that now. Once unlocked, we're presented with the list of users that can be managed. Any non-administrator can be managed using Parental Controls, including the guest user account. If you need to add an account for your child, you can do that by pressing this small plus icon. For families with multiple children, creating an account for each will allow a better look into each one's activities on the Mac. Just make sure that they have their own unique passwords to prevent any sibling mischief. Once your children have accounts, you can move on to setting up the restrictions on their web access. Begin by clicking on the account in the left-hand pane which you'd like to set the restrictions for. I'll choose the demo account. Next, navigate to Web from the tab bar at the top of the window. Here you're given three distinct levels of control over your managed account. The first option is to allow unrestricted access to websites. Despite allowing unrestricted web access, it still provides login capabilities which we'll cover later. For a trust but verify parenting style, this can be a powerful tool. Unfortunately, this leaves the onus on you to check the logs on a regular basis for objectionable material. The next level of control is something akin to the Goldilocks level, not too restricted while also not too open. This makes it an ideal level of control for older children. Select Try to Limit Access to Websites Automatically to enable this option. To work this magic, Apple uses the same basic text analyzing technology used in Mail to operate their junk filters. In addition, this filter also checks whether or not any given website identifies itself as adult-oriented using RTA or SafeSurf rating systems. As one final precaution, this option will also force your child to use the Safe Search setting on popular search engines like Google or Bing. For an increased level of control, you can also block or allow access to websites on a case-by-case -case basis. Do this by clicking the Customize button. Here, you'll be presented with two lists, one with sites to always allow, and the other with those you'd like to always block. When doing either, it's important to note that these filters work on an extremely high level. For example, it's impossible to block or allow access to a specific page on a larger website. Instead, the filter will just block or allow the website as a whole. This precludes doing something such as only allowing specific YouTube channels. That limitation aside, once you're satisfied with your customized list, press OK to save your settings. Now I know, I just mentioned one major limitation, but this approach actually has a few more. First, if a page with adult content contains an unusually small amount of text, the filter might not detect this and allow it through. Conversely, websites that are entirely safe may be mistakenly blocked by the filter. Perhaps the biggest flaw of the filter, though, is its inability to examine the encrypted content of pages using SSL. This includes popular sites like Google Drive, Gmail, Facebook, and many more. Those sites generally begin with HTTPS instead of the more common HTTP. As a result, these sites will be blocked by default. Luckily, simply adding the desired site with its HTTPS URL to your list of allowed websites will alleviate this problem. Thus far, we've covered options to either allow all websites or automatically filter some. While both are good choices for more mature children, parents with younger kids will likely be better served by whitelist-only access. This option will block all websites except those explicitly approved by you. To enable this level of control, select the button next to Allow Access to Only These Websites. While Apple includes a few kid-friendly sites to get you started, Using the plus or minus button beneath the list will allow you to add or remove approved sites. These whitelisted sites are automatically added to Safari's favorites bar for convenient access. And, as with other filtering modes, 
both visited and blocked sites are logged. While all three methods I just showed you help you manage your child's web access in one way or another, the Mac can also connect to the internet through its built-in social apps, including Game Center, Mail, and Messages. Fear not though, parental controls include settings for these applications too. This time, we're going to look under the People tab. You can effectively disable Game Center entirely by unchecking these two boxes. Since it's not like anyone actually uses Game Center, you won't get any pushback from your kids for this one. Game Center jokes aside, Apple has also included filtering options for both mail and messages. These include options to limit communications to allowed contacts. These can be enabled by selecting the respective checkboxes. The allowed contacts list is shared between both applications and can be managed using the plus or minus buttons beneath the list. When adding a contact to the whitelist, you can either add them by name, like so, or by browsing through your address book by hitting the downward caret to the right of the last name field. As one final precaution, you'll want to disable certain apps with web access. To do this, Let's go up to the Apps tab in Parental Controls. Check the box labeled Limit Applications. While there are a number of ways to limit applications, we're concerned with the Allowed Apps list. Simply uncheck any applications you're uncomfortable with. It's a good idea to disallow third-party web browsers like Google Chrome as they don't interface well with Parental Controls. Basically, while Parental Controls will still limit their web access, Rather than being presented with an easy-to-understand error page as with Safari, your child will be hit with a confusing pop-up box when trying to access a blocked site through an alternative browser. So, let's just be safe rather than sorry and disable it. Now that you've set up parental controls for one account, it's easy to apply them to others. In the left-hand accounts list, select the account whose settings you'd like to copy. Next. Click this small gear and choose Copy Settings For. From there, simply select the account you'd like to apply these settings to and choose Paste Settings For. Once you've applied the proper parental controls for each child, viewing their access logs is easy. Just select an account and choose, you guessed it, Logs. Here, you're able to view logs for websites blocked, websites visited, applications, and even messages. As you're sorting through these logs, pressing the block button will allow you to easily block any specific websites or contacts. And that's it. I'm Alex Serena with Tuts Plus, and with these tips in mind, you're now free to breathe a little easier knowing that your children won't be exposed to the darker side of the web.